This here is a viewer's gaming PC. And well, it's not broken, it's not super dirty, but it does have one fairly glaring issue, and that's cable management. Welcome to our new cable management playlist. And I'm hoping that we can turn this into a full-fledged series. We have multiple episodes uh, where we just clean up viewers' cable management for free. We don't charge anything at all for these services. Uh, the only caveat is that you need to be local so that I can pick up and drop off your system in person. So we're looking for really just kind of rat's nesty type builds. They don't have to be dirty. I, in fact, if they're really dirty, I'm just gonna turn it into a PCDC video. Uh, but if your build is you know, relatively clean, as this one is here, uh, and your system works just fine, but your cable management is just an absolute freaking mess, that's what this playlist is for. I'm gonna show you in each of these videos how I cable manage around different cases. So um, that's gonna be the, the, the real variable here, I think, apart from maybe having custom cable extensions and, and, and the like. Uh, being able to manage cables in different cases is gonna be the real challenge here. So I'm gonna try my best to find different builds with different hardware, different cases, to, to just change it up a bit for you all so that it's not so mundane, right? The same episode doesn't need to be the exact same case over and over. That would just get boring. So with that, I hope you enjoy what you're about to watch. And I'm going to try to keep these videos concise around like 10 minutes or so. I don't want to stretch this to 20 minutes for freaking cable management. That just, that's, that's really milking it, I think, a bit too far, even for YouTube standards. So this rig here is our first contestant. And you can see it's, it's a, pretty big mess. This case allows us to route a lot of cables behind the motherboard tray, although there's not a ton of space behind there. That might have been why this owner decided just to run things along the front and it's, yeah, it's kind of driving me nuts. Uh, this right here, yeah, we can definitely clean that up. This is the eight pin for the uh, CPU. Uh, we can route the 24 pin behind the motherboard tray. Same goes for the supplemental PCI cables. Uh, we'll clean up SATA cables at the bottom. You know, there's just a, a lot here that um, was just kind of lazily routed. And look, it's, it's your product. You can do what you want with your build, but I try to make these look as clean as possible because I think of them like works of art, regardless of how much it costs you to build the system, it's your baby. It's a custom build. You designed it, you spec'd it yourself. So, you know, let's let's treat it like one. By the way, before we get started, one last thing that I'll check off camera in every one of these episodes, I might not always mention it, but I'll always turn these systems on and make sure that they post prior to disassembly. So just removing cables alone shouldn't cause any issues, but I obviously don't want to be blamed for something that I didn't do. Uh, and so to protect myself and my business, I have to verify that ahead of time. It's just important that you know that because if you want to do similar things for people in your community, maybe your friends rigs or just, just random strangers, you maybe want to charge for it. Just, yeah check that ahead of time. You'll thank yourself later. Now, the first thing I wanna do is disconnect everything, starting with the larger cables, working our way down to even front IO. Uh, those tiny wires we're gonna take care of first. It's easier to manage the larger cables once the smaller ones are in place. Those can get very rat's nesty and they can tangle themselves around the larger ones, making it more difficult to route things in the future. So let's get started then. 24 pin needs to come out, this one. And we've got smaller ones under the graphics card. So to make things easier for us, we're gonna remove this outright so that we can access all these a bit better. Also just realize these two intake fans were not wired up, so we'll make sure we take care of this for the owner as well. Now we'll remove this right side panel and, uh, oh wow, okay, so it actually looks deceivingly clean back here, but it's just because all the space behind the motherboard tray went unused. We've got just a few extra cables here for the storage drives. Looks like a, an SSD and a hard disk drive. So now everything should be disconnected. And you can see I've separated all of our cables by source. So power supply cables sitting in the front here. We've got SATA cables, which are things you have to add after the fact. We have front IO cables here and our fan cables are at the front. And so we're gonna start with our front IO cables. Uh, these are usually pretty small with the exception of maybe a USB Type-C cable. USB 3.0 cable is a bit annoying as well, just the, the flat ribbon style cable you have to deal with. Uh, and then we'll also tackle these two fan cables as well. Very small. Start with the thinner ones first because these are easier to manage with the fat cables from the power supply out of the way. Now, unfortunately, this motherboard only has two fan headers. We're using one for the CPU cooler here, and the second is placed in a super crappy spot right there. I assume it's there because, you know, it's easier to connect your exhaust fan there. We don't have any exhaust fans. We have two intake fans at the front. So we're gonna use a couple of extensions. Well, okay, actually it's just one extension that splits into two here. Uh, so this is long enough so that we can run it out of view, out of sight behind the motherboard tray by the time these are connected to the fans up front. Now I've actually changed things around here and I think I'm gonna stick with this. So I've got the CPU fan cable 
connected to this header here, which is just a system fan one header. Uh, and I've got the extension, the splitter up top for the CPU header. Now it's not normally how you'd wanna do things, but it's very easy to adjust fan curves and the BIOS shouldn't be an issue. Uh, and this keeps things much cleaner as well because no, no longer do we have to see this ugly extension running across the top of the board. I've also managed to almost completely hide this uh, fan cable, which I think is pretty sweet. We've got it wedged under the, uh, the entire shroud. So it's almost totally out of sight. It looks kind of like it's wireless almost. This next part's gonna be pretty sweet, I think. So to keep the cable tight, the extension cable here, I'm going to tuck it underneath the sleeve and I'm gonna use a zip tie to keep it all hidden. And that way we don't have any slack showing on the other side. We've got to be kind of careful here how we route it. Bit of finesse involved, nothing too complicated. And then we'll push that underneath and look at there. That cable is totally tucked away. I really like that. These fan cables are routed through the cutout that is, well, there for these two fans, but it's not in an ideal spot given where we have our extension because we have to basically let these cables run straight across this opening and you can see straight through uh, from the left side panel. So it's just gonna look a bit messy having cables stretch across to the, to the motherboard tray. What we're gonna do instead is tuck these cables back inside and we're gonna run them along the side of this so that there's only a tiny bit exposed further up. And after zip tying things down, again, a pretty unconventional place to use zip ties, but there aren't many in this case, so we're <laughs> just working with what we got. You're gonna hear that phrase a lot, I imagine, in this playlist. You see, we just have a tiny little sliver where you're gonna be able to see just uh, maybe an inch or so worth of cabling, but that's it. And I think that's just a much cleaner look overall. We've got it routed along the edge of the case so it stays out of view for the most part. And look at that, perfectly routed right in front of our uh, little splitter here. We'll tackle front IO quickly, uh, starting with the slimmest cables first and working our way up to the fat ones like USB 3.0. Use, you know, common sense cable cutouts uh, to route these. We'll take care of things at the back here in a second. Take care of USB 3 here. I hate this connector with a passion. At this point, we're pretty much finished with the top half of the build. Our 24 pin's gonna run up to this cutout here, but we do have a zip tie point slightly above that, and that's what we're gonna use to unify or route all these cables the one long channel going straight down. It's gonna look a bit cluttered further down. I'm not sure how we're gonna tackle that yet because there's just nothing we can really do given the constraints of this case and the fact we're using a smaller motherboard size. But uh, at least up top here, we can get these all tucked away. We'll tackle SATA cables. These will be handled mostly at the bottom here. The two drives need to run into the SATA ports on the motherboard, which are at the bottom right of the board, kind of right behind this area here. You can run these through here and connect them to the two nearest ports just to keep things clean and tidy. If we have any issues with uh, boot devices being detected, we can always swap these ports around. In this case, it's probably best that we tuck them under the lower drive so that it's out of sight from the left side. You can see we've got all the slack taken out. So um, it looks nice, I guess. And from the left side, this is all you see of the SATA cables. That's it. Again, trying to keep as minimal cable exposure as possible. We can't see anything down below. That's what we want. Now from this angle, you might not be able to tell, and that's totally by design. We already have our SATA power cable connected, and I wanted to show you how concealed it was. So we were able to tuck this in between the channels uh, of the case and these are just the excess ones. So the excess cabling, excess length that we're not gonna use, it's totally out of sight. We kept it very minimalistic here, did interfere at all with our SATA data cables. And uh, I did confirm that th these little ridges here aren't really part of the, uh, the integrity of the right side panel being secured. So um, it's nice that we have that little bit of space there because we are gonna have excess 24 pin and 8 pin EPS cabling that I have no idea what we're gonna do with. So we'll have to finesse some things. Now as for 8 pin EPS, we're gonna route that next because it's smaller than the 24 pin and it uh, kind of gets in the way of things. So we're gonna run this along the right side from your vantage point of the case and then we're gonna tuck it in up top here. So this part, depending on the case, and go one of two ways. Either you'll have enough cable length or you won't. It looks like here we definitely do. So look at there, nice and uh, mostly out of sight. As usual, zip ties are your best friends. I know some people hate them, especially like IT guys, apparently they hate them but look how much cleaner that is now. We've got the PCI cable routed through the cutout. Just gonna leave it there for a second. We'll insert the graphics card once more. Actually one slot too high, it'll sit just like that. And then we're gonna use the shorter stub of connectors uh, and we're gonna run these directly into the card. You'll see why we're doing it this way in a second. A lot of people I see like to use the very end of the PCI cable strand and I, 
I usually try to avoid that because if you connect this and you've got this just kind of hanging here and this is just bridge between two different sets of cables, right? These are effectively daisy chained. And I don't like the way that that looks. If we do it this way and use the shorter end to connect to the card, assuming there's only one six pin or eight pin needed, then the remaining daisy chain set can be just zip tied right here to the bulk of the cables. And we can keep these out of sight, tucked further away so that from the front, right? Our line of sight from the left side panel, uh, things look much cleaner here. Side shot vantage point, much cleaner looking runs looking through the left side panel. It looks like one solid chunk of cables for PCI supplemental power, but we actually have this daisy chain set just zip tied right behind it. So uh, this is what I try to do, and I recommend that if you care at all about aesthetics and you have a similar issue, that you do things this way as well. Again, you have to have one eight pin or one six pin, but it works. One final zip tie here at the bottom, and I believe we're gonna have it. Not exactly what I had in mind. This HD audio cable is a bit too short, so it's just kind of dangling here. It doesn't look as clean. We're trying to stick to horizontal and, ver wait, horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, but yeah, you can only work with what you're given and uh, this will just have to be. So let's cut these zip ties back and I'll show you what the right side looks like. Oh yeah, she is cleaning up nicely. I'll tell you what, considering the constraints of this case, I don't think it can really get much better unless we had like custom cable channels and did some just, uh, I don't know, and we could really get super creative with it. But for a build like this, I don't think it's worth going that into detail. I just wanted to clean it up, uh, especially on the other side. But you can see back here, everything is just nice and neatly run. It's very easy to identify specific cables and where they're headed. And so if you wanted to take away or add things in the future, it shouldn't be difficult to do at all. But this side is the side that I care more about because it's the side you can actually see through the acrylic left side panel. You can see straight through to where the right panel would be. And this is totally cleaned up. You'd normally have fan cables stretching across here. And uh, because we routed those around the edge of the frame, it all looks much cleaner. Uh, we don't have cables running in front of the graphics card anymore. We have cleaned up the cable bunch down here at the bottom where uh, our uh, power supply is. We don't have a basement, so that was another disadvantage of this case, but we still kept it very clean. You can see our storage drives there. Still looks very clean uh, in front of that and even underneath. We don't see any cables being stuffed under there. And a very minimal cable exposure elsewhere, just a small 24 pin poking out from the side and a small 8 pin EPS up top. That's, that's pretty much it. And that is, again, by design, we want to keep as minimal cable exposure as possible unless in the event we have maybe uh, custom cables that we want to show off uh, maybe the the color scheme or whatever these are just basic black ones and I really like the way this turned out our right side panel test let's see how easy this locks into place it was very easy before but that's because there was nothing routed behind the motherboard tray and that's it it's ready to go we'll tighten this thing down with a couple captive thumb screws is actually missing one up top we'll take care of that form and it's looking super clean Corsair's Xenion 32 QHD 165 is a versatile monitor chock full of leading tech for your gaming and content creating needs. Enjoy a quantum dot color accurate 32 inch fast IPS display with a blazing fast refresh rate of up to 165 hertz for ultra smooth picture. Couple that with a one millisecond response time and you've got yourself a sweet gaming panel. And with its sleek and slim ergonomic profile, which of course doesn't hurt, it's sure to impress on any desk. You can learn more about it by clicking the link below. Well, what a transformation. I mean, it's, it's not the most mind-blowing thing ever, and it doesn't take a lot of skill to do what I just did, uh, but it certainly does require a bit of diligence on your part, and it'll change from case to case, the amount of input that you need to, to throw into this to clean up cables. And I'm sure some folks are gonna be screaming right now, Greg, this was a huge waste of time. It didn't change anything about performance. It doesn't change anything about temperatures or what have you. It's just an aesthetic play. You're just trying to clean things up a tad. And I don't think that's worth the 30 minutes or an hour that it would take to make this look the way that you got it. And I get that, I do. But I also think you should take a bit of pride in your work. If you built this from scratch, if you curated the parts yourself, just take at least a few minutes and try cleaning up cable management a tad, especially if you have a clear, um, maybe tempered glass or acrylic left side panel. Just take some pride in that because folks are gonna see it, not just you, but potentially other people. And you want them to be impressed by not only the parts in here, but how clean they all look together. So that's why I wanted to do what I did in this video. And I think it paid off. It looks so much cleaner now. The only other thing on my agenda is to make sure that the system does still boot into Windows. Uh, but apart from that, I'll reach out to the owner, let him know that his system 
is ready to go again. Uh, speaking of, if you have a system that has pretty rough cable management and you want a chance for us to clean it up for you for free, we won't charge anything at all, uh, and we can actually get these knocked out in maybe like a couple days or so, uh, then submit a, a, an email or just, yeah, send an email to us. It's help at salazarstudios.org. We only want you to use that if you have a console cleaning inquiry or uh, a cable management inquiry. Uh, if you have a really dirty system that you want cleaned in the PCDC series, uh, then you need to submit a form, and that form is linked in all of our PCDC videos. Same goes for the fix or flop stuff. Don't send us a help email for fix or flop or PCDC inquiries. They get filtered out very quickly. Uh, but if you have a system that needs cable management help, send an email to uh, help at salazarstudios.org. Again, that's going to be in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this one. Hopefully, the transformation was worth it, uh, and hopefully you learned a thing or two about cable managing. Maybe in cases like this, not exactly this case from Fractal, but maybe other cases that don't have basements, let's say, or minimal space behind the motherboard tray, exposed areas uh, toward the front. Um, there, there's a lot of you know different things going on here, and it's important that we work with what we have and, and do our best to keep these cables as covered and concealed as possible, especially when they're just you know the vanilla ones from the power supply manufacturer. If you enjoyed this one, thumbs up, consider subscribing, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me.